So you know, you, you, you know once you know that you know this knowledge, you're held at a high standard. And if you don't meet that standard, the most high God is going to deal with you differently than with someone who don't know. That's why he put your butt. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So you have to, you have to do. You have to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Because the most high God is going to deal with you more harshly than he will with someone who don't know. You understand that? Give me that. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. But therefore, he's going to judge you, because you are the house of Israel. We you know. Everyone according to his ways. So you're going to get judged according to your ways. So if your ways is of the devil, you're going to be judged based off that. So, where, where was Jesus born? Was he born in Africa, Israel? Where was Jesus born in? Bethlehem. Where is Bethlehem? Oh, okay. Bethlehem is in Israel, Northeast Africa. So, we know that Africa, back when Christ was walking the earth, those people were dark skinned, like me and you, right? So, what color is Christ? All right. So, how did how does he look? Uh huh. I believe he's doctor. So, who's this guy right here? Well, that's uh, that's Jesus that is portrayed to us, everybody. By who though? The white folks. The white folks. So we learned this image in slavery. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. So because you could go into a lot of Baptist church, Catholic church that have our people in it, and they still have it. they still have this image in there, right? So who is this? Give me revelations. Okay, we gonna see what the Bible say. See if Christ looks like this. Read that. Revelations chapter one verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the word revelation means the reveal. So this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Read it again. The revelation of Jesus Christ. All right, now jump the verse. 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the revealing of Jesus Christ says that his head and the hairs on his head were what? Were white like wool. Were white like wool. So we see this has white woolly hair, right? Because typically when our men get older in age, our hair turns white or gray as they say. So we know that Christ, like this brother in his Jeep right here, his beard is turning white. So the image that the world says Jesus is is a white man with stringy hair, and his, and his beard was brown. But the Bible says Christ had white woolly hair. We know it's white as snow. And it was so white, it was white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So Christ had red eyes because he drank wine. The prophecy when you read in Genesis, it said that his eyes will be red with wine. Because his first miracle was turning water to what? To wine. To wine. Because Christ, Christ was, he was portrayed as a wine beverage to those who didn't really agree to his doctrine. But he wasn't a wine beverage, he just drank wine. Right. We know. And his feet, like unto fine bread. Okay, ma'am. So what color is brass? Brass. Copper color, right? So it says his feet was what? Like a fine bread. So his feet looked like brass. Like copper. Or like a penny. Like your skin tone. Look at your skin tone, man. That's the top of his feet, because Christ wore sandals. So John the Revelator was on the island of Patmos, and he saw a vision of Christ. He seen Christ. And he saw that he had sandals on, and the top of his feet was like unto fine brass. We know. As if they burned in a furnace. Not only was it brown brass, but his feet looked like it burned in a furnace. Now, Evan, you cook, right? Sometimes. So, you've been cooking for a long time, right? When you started, you was probably a teenager, right? When you first learned how to cook, 
Did you burn anything? <laughs> Every day, right? <laughs> so what color was, let me see, what, what are some of the things you, you cooked when you were when you were young? Eggs. Eggs? Chicken? Okay, did you put it on a barbecue grill or you put it in the oven? On the stove? And you burned it sometimes, right? What color was that chicken when you burned? It was black? What? So if you burn anything, it's black, right? So the Bible is going to describe that Christ's skin was brown, but it was like it burned in the furnace. So if you burn anything in the furnace, it comes out what? Black, like my pants. So we're going to read it one more time for the people, our people across the street, so they'll know. Hold on, hold on, Evan, let me share this one last thing. Read it again. And his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So his feet were so dark, it's like they burned in a furnace. So we know that Christ was a dark-skinned man. He looked like this, right? But the world says he looks like this. This is the image that we learn to say. This is the image that they beat into us. You see that? They whipped us into that. We're still being beat in our minds mentally. Because if Lil Dark was out here what? on the microphone, everybody would be over there. What? But now that we're given the knowledge of the Bible, the knowledge that we are the true people of God, nobody wants to hear. So. so that lets you know that yes, we are destroyed. Give me that in uh, Jeremiah. We are destroyed. We destroyed as a people. Yeah, give me Isaiah first, and then we'll go to Jeremiah. You don't even want to take time out to listen to what the truth is. How can we stop the crime in our neighborhood? One of the things we could do is teach our people that they are the gods of this earth. We're not just African Americans. We are the Israelites of the Bible. That's power in their name. That's right. It's power in the name of Israel. Hence the, the word Israel means a prince that has power with God. And the two brothers just walked by. How do we stop the crime in our neighborhood? Can those black men come together and talk about strategies on how we can stop the crime in our neighborhood? How can we stop the crime in our neighborhood, bro? We gotta come together, bro. We gotta come together. What's your name, bro? Joshua. Joshua, that's a mighty name. My name is Hosea. So when we come together, what do we come together under? We come under the most high. Under the most high, right? Read that Isaiah real quick. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. So the reason why we, like you said, we haven't came together is because we don't know. There's no peace, right? So we have to go out into the streets and teach our people. Hand them literature and let them know. Go on the street corners. Go to where our people is at. We, well, we got people that sell the dope out here. We got people that's prostituting their bodies. Right. We got people that's out here gang banging. Right. We got youngsters out here carjacking. You know what I'm saying? Shooting the killer one. There's a lot of shooting the killer going on in this neighborhood. So we had to come out here on these street corners and tell them, look, you are Israel. You understand that? Give me Zephaniah. We have to come together, but we have to come together at the Most High, right? So what does the Most High say to his children? What does he say to them to bring them together? What are some of the things he say? Keep the commandments and do what? So what type of commandments should we be keeping? Name some. Okay. Well, here's one right here that you quoted earlier, but I'm going to get it out of the Bible. Read that. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. So the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the children of Israel that is not desired. And this is evident right here to what happened to us. Because if we was desired, you would have never took us from the west coast of Africa and beat us with chains, beat us with whips, sick dogs to eat us alive, put us on horses and have horses to tear up limb from limb, burn us alive, hang us on trees, cut babies out of our women's stomach, rape the women that we had, right. sell us to all over the world. If we was desired, you would have never did that to us. Right. So if we have to gather together amongst ourselves, under the laws of God, right? So you say, not spilling, not killing, right? Not spilling, not killing. You need that in uh, Leviticus 19 and 13. So I asked this brother the same thing that I'm asking you. What are some solutions that we could come up with as black men to stop the crime in the city of Chicago? My name is Hosea. Johnson. Johnson. 
Okay. What solutions you got? I guess start with the children. Start with the children doing what? It's so different than what we are doing. Okay, like what? Pick up books instead of guns. So read. Yeah, actually, uh, be a presence in their life. Be a presence like what? Give me some more. Okay, because a lot of these kids are what? Doing robbing and stealing, right? And that's what he said. He said we need to come together. And that's what you're saying too. Come together, start being a presence in the young men's lives. Show them, look, read about your history, right? right. That's what we're doing. Did this happen to us? This, who, who did this to us? Who did it? The white man. But now here it is that we're doing. So essentially, we have the mind of the white man to be killing one another. Right. Because if he did it first, now we're doing it. Johnson, let me read the scripture real quick 19 and 13. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 13. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. So the scriptures say we're not supposed to defraud our neighbor, neither rob him. We have 12 year old, 13 year old men riding around carjacking women, carjacking men. The scriptures say you're not supposed to rob one another. So if we teach the Bible to our people, then that could stop carjacking. Ain't that right, Joshua? Read it again. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. So we're not supposed to defraud our neighbor, neither rob him. Don't you agree with that? Yeah. Not supposed to defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. So Joshua. So Joshua. You know you Israel, right? Yeah. Okay. So are you congregating with a congregation right now? I saw some brothers that I met on um, 15 Nights of Damien. You know, I just went in there, they gave me a little word, you know what I'm saying? And I just going through a lot of stuff on but as far as I've been kind of studying and trying to show my people that, you know, all different sides, trying to bring them together, you know, it's hard, but that's what I'm fighting for, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm tired of it. I am, bro. I'm ready now. It's hard for you. So you know, you, you know, once you know that you know this knowledge, you're held at a high standard. And if you don't meet that standard, the most high God is going to deal with you differently than with someone who don't know. That's why he whipping your butt. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So you have to, you have to do. You have to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Because the most high God is going to deal with you more harshly than he will with someone who don't know. You understand that? Give me that. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. So therefore he's going to judge you. Because you are in the house of Israel. We you know. Everyone according to his ways. So you're going to get judged according to your ways. So if your ways is of the devil, you're going to be judged based off that. But if your ways are righteous, you're going to be judged based off that. It's either or, life or death. You have to choose. But lately, you've been choosing death. That's why the most high God been jacking you up. That's why you just stick. When you heard the word, you heart, you listen. You didn't, you didn't go nowhere. So you know the most high God is calling you. He's, he's trying to bring you in. So it's, this is not by accident. He's right here. You don't know if this might be your last call, your last call what? to repentance. Right. Because we done talked to plenty of brothers that knew there was Israel, and they was like, ah, they went in one ear and out the other. Next week, you see them on the news. Damn. We don't want that to be you, Joshua. We want you to hearken. We don't. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, Everyone according to his own ways, saith the Lord, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So you have to repent. You know what the word repent means, right? What does it mean? So, right. So it's to have godly sorrow, right? So if you were stealing, steal no more. Turn from doing that. Start keeping God's laws. Start dealing truthfully with your neighbor. Stop defrauding them, stop robbing them, right? If you were killing, stop killing. If you were lying, stop lying. So you have to return back to who? In repentance. To the Most High, keeping His what? Keeping His commandments. So, that's why who? I'm just blessed with What do you mean? Well, you remember what you said earlier? You said we have to gather together. 
that's a that's a step that's a process in that's a process in what repentance too. Because now when you come together amongst your brothers, you have brothers to help you. You may be struggling in something. Now you have your brothers you can call on to help you go through those trials together. So he can give you scriptures to help build you up. You can come around the body. You can be yours in tune and spirit and unity with your brothers versus being out here in the world by yourself. And you know what's going on out here. Now you're being influenced by the world. But if you're amongst your brothers, you're being influenced by the scriptures because we are with godly men. The scriptures say be with godly men. Right? So we have to come together and we have to repent. That's your first step. You have to repent. You know. So, the, so iniquity shall not ruin you. Shall not be your ruin. So you have to repent because God going to judge you your ways. If you don't, sin is going to be your ruin. Because he's jacking you up now. You get a little dinks in the armor. But what you don't want is for your soul to be took. You don't want your life to get taken off this earth. And now you got to go back to the Father. You may not come back. You may not come back and now you get judged for everything, every bad thing you do. You understand that? Let me do Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Do that. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? So Israel, Joshua, the mighty man Joshua from the nation of Israel, a prince that has power with God. These are the things that God is requiring of you. You're about to read it right now. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. You have to fear the Lord thy God. So fearing the Lord, what does that mean? Okay, so fear the judgment, but it also means to have reverence, respect, a high level of reverence to him where you're not just going to say anything out of your mouth to him. You're going to be careful on how you're going to present yourself to him. Just like you're going to be careful on how you present yourself and how you walk, how you deal with other people. Because when you see your brothers and sisters out here, you're not going to deal with them ungodly because you fear God. Because God is them at the same time. They might be in that low decayed state, but they still are the children of God. You understand that? So you have to fear God. That's the first step. You know. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. You have to walk in all his ways. Not some of them. Not half steps. Because right now you're striving the fence. You do war. What does the scripture say about being new war? In between, he just spew you out. Meaning you get put to death. You get cut off. Because you're too much of an abomination to him. Now he's been trying and trying. He's been patient. He's been dealing with you based off your crooked ways. But hey, look. If you don't hark it, at some point you're going to get cut off. So you have to take this thing very, very serious. You know? And to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So to love God, you just can't go and give him a hug. To love God is what? Doing what he says. Harking it to his word. And do everything that he says to do with the best of your ability. So you have to congregate, you have to fear God, you have to love him, and you have to walk in all his ways. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support.